Jack and the Beanstalk. There once lived a widow with her young son Jack. All she had was a cow, which she fondly called Milky White. She sold its milk at the marketplace to make a living. Now Jack was a pretty smart lad, but did not put his brains to good use to help his mother. Oh, I wonder if I will live to see the day when you make an honest living, you good-for-nothing. I'm getting old. How long will I look after you? Don't worry, mother. I'll look after you very well. Huh? I will die peacefully if I know you can look after yourself. And so life went on. However, one morning when Jack's mother went out to milk the cow, she got a bad shock. Jack! Jack! What happened, mother? Are you okay? Oh, Jack! There's no milk. Milky White has no more milk to give us. Oh, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage? Don't worry, mother. I said I will look after you. But what are we going to do now? Well, though Milky White has been a loyal friend, we have to be practical now. I will take her to the marketplace and get a good price for her. So off Jack went to sell Milky White. As he was walking, he came across a funny-looking man. Well, well, lad. Where are you off to this morning? Milky White has stopped giving milk, so I'm going to the marketplace to sell her. This is your lucky day. Look what I have here. They seem to be some funny-looking beans. Oh no 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 no! These are no ordinary beans. These are magical beans. I'll tell you what. I'll give these beans to you in exchange for your cow. And why would I do something stupid like that? Because, like I told you, these are magical beans. If you plant them by morning, they will have reached the sky. Are you joking? Not at all, my lad. Take these and see what happens. Jack took the beans and walked home, thinking that his mother would be very pleased. What? You gave away the cow for these these stupid beans? I should have known better than to trust you to sell the cow. Jack's mother threw the beans out of the window, but when Jack got up the next morning, he saw an amazing sight. The beans had actually grown so high that they seemed to touch the sky. Oh my gosh! I can't believe my eyes. I wonder where this beanstalk leads to. Let me climb up and see for myself. Jack jumped out of his window, caught hold of the stalk, and quickly clambered up. He climbed and climbed and climbed, and finally reached a wide road that led to a big castle. There was a tall and big woman standing there, and Jack went up to her. Good morning, ma'am. Would you be so kind to give me some breakfast? Breakfast, boy! You better get lost, or my husband will have you for breakfast. He just loves to have little boys like you on toast. Oh, ma'am, please! I beg of you. I am really, really hungry. Oh, all right. Come along. Jack went with her to the kitchen. Here is some bread and cheese. You can wash it down with some milk from that jug. And better make it quick before my husband, the ogre, comes home. Jack started gobbling down his food, but just as he was finishing, there was a stomping sound which made the house shake. The ogre's wife quickly hid Jack in the oven, just as the huge ogre strode in with three calves hanging from his belt. Here, wife, make me breakfast with a couple of these. Fee fi fo fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bread. Oh, you must be getting the smell of the boy who had it for dinner last night. That smell is still lingering in the kitchen. Go to your room. I will get your breakfast there. As soon as the ogre went out of the room, Jack scrambled out of the oven and was about to run away. But the ogre's wife stopped him. You better wait till he takes his snooze after breakfast. If he smells you, he might just make a meal of you for dinner. So Jack waited for the ogre to fall asleep. When he finished his breakfast, the ogre called out to his wife. Wife, fetch me my bag of gold coins. 
The ogre's wife placed two big bags in front of him and he started to count the gold coins till he fell asleep. Jack could not resist this opportunity. He quietly crept up to the ogre, picked up one of the bags of coins and ran back to the beanstalk. He threw the bag and quickly climbed down. All the gold coins fell into his mother's garden and when Jack reached down, he called out to his mother. Mother, mother, look what I have here. We can sell these coins and our problems will be over. Oh, Jack, I hope you haven't done anything wrong. Of course not, mother. Don't you trust your son? Jack's mother was very happy, and she and Jack lived comfortably for some time. But soon all the gold coins were gone. Jack decided to climb the beanstalk again and once again try his luck. Early one morning, he climbed the beanstalk and went up to the road to the ogre's castle. The ogre's wife was at the door and Jack went up to her. Oh, ma'am, would you be kind enough to give me some breakfast? I am really starving. Off with you, boy. The last time you came, my husband's bag of gold coins went missing. Oh, ma'am, I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you don't think I had anything to do with it. But I'll tell you what, you give me some breakfast and I will tell you something about that bag of gold. I don't know if it's a good idea to believe you. Go on. Have your breakfast, but make sure you are done before my husband gets back. Jack had just finished on his breakfast when he heard the thumping steps of the ogre. Once again, the ogre's wife quickly hid him in the oven. Ah, I'm hungry, wife. Broil these three oxen for me. Wait a minute. Fee-fi-fo-fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll have his bones to grind my bread. <laughs> oh, stop it. You always seem to be smelling the blood of an Englishman. The ogre's wife convinced him again that there was no Englishman. After breakfast, the ogre called out to his wife. Wife, bring me my hen that lays the golden eggs. The wife went into the room and returned with a hen, which she placed on the table before her husband. Aha, my wonderful hen. Lay. Before Jack's astonished eyes, the hen laid a beautiful golden egg. The ogre was very happy and soon began to doze off. A hen lays golden eggs? I have to have it. Mother and I will never want for anything ever. Quietly, Jack crept up to the table and pounced on the hen and was off in a jiffy. But the hen got scared and cackled and woke the ogre up. Hey, you! Stop, you thief! But Jack was too quick for the huge ogre. Before the ogre could even get up, Jack was running down the road and then quickly scrambling down the beanstalk. As soon as he reached down, he rushed into the house and called out to his mother. Now, now, why are you panting so, Jack? And where did you get this hen from? Mother, you have to see this to believe it. Hen, lie! Jack's mother could not believe what she was seeing. Come on, Jack. Say lay once more and see what happens. Jack says lay again, and the hen lays another perfect golden egg. Oh, Jack, we will never want for anything ever again. You have proved yourself to be a good son. And so time passed. Jack and his mother sold the golden eggs and lived a happy life. However, after some time once again, Jack wanted to climb the beanstalk and see what he could get this time. One fine morning, he set off again, reached the same road, and made his way to the ogre's castle. But this time, he knew the ogre's wife knew that he had stolen the hen that laid the golden eggs. So he hid himself behind a bush when he neared the castle. Ah, the ogre's wife is going out with her bucket to get water. Now is the right time to sneak into the castle. Jack quietly entered the castle, but this time he did not hide in the oven. He went and hid himself behind a large copper pot. Soon the ogre's wife came in with a bucket of water, and after some time, Jack once again felt the rumbling of the ogre's footsteps. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bread. I don't smell anything, and I did not see anyone come in. You and your imaginary smells. But the ogre was not convinced and started searching in the kitchen. He looked everywhere, even in the oven. 
Jack was terrified that at any minute the ogre would find him. But just as the ogre came towards him, his wife called out. Now will you stop this nonsense and come have your breakfast? You won't enjoy it if it gets cold. Oh well, though. I could have sworn I smelled the blood of any Englishman. Jack heaved a sigh of relief when the ogre went away to have his breakfast. He had been saved just in the nick of time. Oh boy, I better not be so foolish again. Thank God for my lucky stars, or I would be between the ogre's bread slices and he would be having a Jack sandwich. When the ogre finished his breakfast, he called out to his wife to bring the golden harp. Oh, how beautifully the harp sang! Jack had never heard such a sweet music. As usual, the ogre soon started feeling sleepy and nodded off. Jack waited a while, then slowly crept up to the ogre and snatched the magical harp. But alas, the harp immediately stopped singing and called out, "Master, master, someone is stealing me!" The ogre immediately got up, and Jack tucked the harp under his arm and fled for his life. The ogre was furious and seized his heavy oak club and ran after Jack. Now Jack was so tiny compared to the ogre that his steps were no match for the ogre's giant strides. Soon the ogre was getting nearer and nearer to Jack, but Jack managed to reach the beanstalk and quickly started climbing down. The ogre also started climbing after Jack, making the beanstalk shake violently. In the meantime, Jack's mother was getting worried when she did not see him in the house and came out to the garden to look for him. When Jack saw her far below, he called out to her, "Mother, mother, quick! Bring the big axe from the garden shed!" Oh dear me, Jack! What is happening? And who is that huge fellow following you? No time to explain, mother. Just go and bring the axe quickly. Jack's mother ran to the garden shed and came back with an axe. As Jack neared the ground, he quickly picked up the axe and started cutting down the beanstalk. When he had chopped it halfway through, the beanstalk became weak and could not bear the weight of the huge ogre, who fell down with a huge thud. Hello, hello. Yippee! The ogre is dead, dead, dead. And so came to an end the cruel ogre and the beanstalk. Jack and his mother had all the money they wanted with the golden eggs, enjoyed the beautiful music of the golden harp, and lived happily for a long, long time. Once upon a time, there lived a great thief named Robin Hood. He lived in the Sherwood Forest, away from the village. Even though he stole goods from others, he had a kind heart as well. He used to share all the stolen stuffs and money among the poor people who lived in the village. Robin Hood was cheated by some rich men when he was just a boy. That's why he hated the rich people so much. Ever since he was a boy, he had decided that he would not spare the rich. He started stealing from a very young age, and by the time he grew up, he became quite good at it. But he never used the stolen money for himself. As he gave everything away to the poor, the name and fame of Robin Hood had spread all through England. The rich were now scared of going through Sherwood Forest because they knew that Robin Hood would attack them. Once they complained about him to the sheriff. Sir, yesterday I was returning through the forest after my business trip. The cart was full of money with me. It was close to evening and the sun was coming down. Suddenly, this Robin Hood 
appeared out of nowhere and took all my money. It all happened very quickly, and we couldn't do anything. You have to help me, Sheriff. This is getting out of control. The pressure had mounted on the Sheriff to catch Robin Hood. He tried his level best to arrest this man. But all of his attempts failed miserably. Finally, the sheriff decided to seek the help of the king. <laughs> Oh my lord, I have tried everything to catch this Robin Hood, but none of the plans have worked so far. I can catch him if you would send some of your soldiers to help me. But the king refused. What? You want my men to run behind a simple thief now? Absolutely not. They have better work to do here. It is your duty to catch the thieves. Now go and sort this out yourself. Yes, sir. The pressure to capture Robin Hood had grown tremendous by now. One day, the sheriff designed a brilliant plan to capture Robin Hood. The next day, he called for a meeting with the rich and noble men in town. He also called his friends and told them about his plans. We'll have a competition among the best archers in town. When Robin Hood hears about this contest, he cannot resist taking part in this competition. He will surely come. When he does, my guards will arrest him. Wow, that is a great idea. He will definitely fall into this trap. Sheriff had heard many tales about Robin Hood from the local people. It was clear from their description that he was the best archer in all of Nottingham. Robin Hood soon heard about this contest. Like the sheriff had predicted, he longed to participate in the contest. He wanted to prove to the world that he was best archer in town and that no one could ever beat him. Hey, Bob. Did you hear about the archery contest? Look at the pamphlet. The villagers are organizing an archery contest next week. They want to find out the best archer in town. I'm thinking of taking part in this. However, his friend Bob had a different point of view. Robin, listen to me. I smell something fishy. I think the villagers or the sheriff must be plotting something. I strongly feel that the purpose of this contest is to trap and arrest you. Don't go, Robin. It will be a foolish thing to do. But the idea of winning the contest had gone into his head, and Robin Hood was not willing to listen to his friend. He had decided to participate to show everyone how great he was. Days passed, and the date of the contest finally arrived. Sheriff and his people made all arrangements at the venue for the contest. The villagers started gathering at the venue. Sheriff and his men were eagerly waiting for the arrival of Robin Hood. They waited for a long time, but there was no sign of Robin Hood in sight. Sheriff lost his patience and turned to one of the guards and asked him, Has Robin Hood arrived yet? Go and check right now. Send me the signal when you find him. The guard went ahead and searched for Robin Hood. But even after searching for a long time, the guard could not find Robin Hood. He returned to the sheriff, disappointed. I'm 
I, sorry, sir, but I, I couldn't find him anywhere. What? Did you check the participants? How can you be so sure? Hmm. Then he must have figured out our plans. He must have backed out of the contest. Hmm. The competition started. One of Sheriff's friends named John was also participating in the contest. He was an excellent archer. And he was quite famous too. The contest started. One by one, the participants started getting eliminated as the rounds progressed. There was a man wearing a green outfit and bright yellow hair who was giving a tough competition to all the other archers present there. As they approached the final round, the competition between John and the man with the yellow hair got very tight. When the crowd saw this, they started to cheer for both of them. It was the final round now, and it was time for the last arrow to be shot. The winner of this round would be declared the winner and the best archer in Nottingham. There was also a prize for the winner, a golden arrow. John was given the first chance. John took aim and shot an arrow. The arrow hit the bullseye mark. Sheriff looked so happy and he applauded his friend. Then it was the turn of the man in green attire. He slowly took aim and shot an arrow. The arrow sailed straight through the air, splitting John's arrow and hit the bullseye. It was a miracle. People were shocked to see this. They didn't even utter a sound. When the crowd came back into their senses, they cheered for the man with yellow hair. And in the flash of a second, the man shot two more arrows, flying towards the chair on which the sheriff sat. The arrow struck on either side of the chair. The sheriff was stunned. He did not understand what was happening. For anyone knew what was going on, the man shot another arrow. This one struck the golden arrow. The prize fell straight into his hands. The man with yellow hair was none other than Robin Hood. Before the sheriff recovered, he pulled off his wig, threw it on the ground, jumped over a wall onto his waiting horse and rode away. All of these happened in a lightning speed. Sheriff realized who it was and shouted to his guards. Catch him! It is Robin Hood! But before the guards could even move, Robin Hood was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Robin Hood once again proved that he was unbeatable. <laughs>